Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm presenting a case of a 14-year-old girl, resident of Lakhimpur, presented in our OPD with blurring of vision in both eyes since two weeks. Blurring of vision in left eye, followed by right eye, that was sudden and onset, painless, progressive in nature. There was no history of cuff, headache, trauma, joint pain, backache, oral or genital ulcers. There was a past history of typhoid fever one month back. There was a contact history with dog and cattle. Patient was treated elsewhere with tablet cotrimoxazole, BID, tablet azithromycin. As the patient was not improving, patient was shifted on acyclovir 800 mg five times a day and oral steroid was started from last one week. Ocular examination was done. Position of head, eyelids and lacrimal apparatus were within normal limit. Right eye uncorrected visual equity was 1 by 60. Left eye it was 3 by 60. Near vision was less than N36 in both the eyes. NTR segment examination was within normal limit except NTR chamber. Cells plus one and player plus one was present in both the eyes. Fundus examination was done with indirect ophthalmoscopy. Right eye media was hazy due to dense vitritis and multiple whitish, creamish whitish lesions were seen in the posterior pole that was one, and two, one to two disc diameter in size. In left eye, media was comparatively better from the right eye and similar lesions were seen in the posterior pole and we can see the disc was also hyperemic. In the left eye in the posterior, uh, in the periphery, we can see a large subretinal lesion, uh, two to three disc diameter in size with speck of heme was present. These were the investigation done elsewhere. Polymorph were reduced, Montux was negative, ELISA for torch, IgG, HSV1 and 2 and toxoplasma came out positive. USG B scan of the right eye, was done, vitreous echoes with increased retinochoroidal thickness was seen. AC tab was done, PCR was negative for eubacterium and panfungal genome. As media was relatively better in the left eye, fundus fluorescent angiography was done. In the late phases of the angiography, we could see an incomplete ring of fire appearance. So the history was revisited and the patient was re-evaluated and it came that patient had a history of consumption of raw milk since last two months. So a uh, USG abdomen was done. There was an increased thickness of a uh, ileocecal wall and enlargement of lymph nodes was seen. So patient was suspected of having uh, intestinal cox and patient was referred to the pediatrician for starting appropriate ATT regime. After two days of starting ATT regime, we started st uh, oral steroid and this was the result. After four weeks of ATT, right eye vision was 6-12 and N8, and best corrective visual equity of left eye was 6-9 N8. So this was a case of a pan uh, uveitis, pediatric pan uveitis, secondary to tubercul uh, tuberculosis. Thank you. So initially we thought, uh, uh, initial differentials were like uh, endogenous and off because patient was having a history of typhoid fever. And uh, then uh, we were suspecting uh, viral retinitis also. So toxo, it was because multiple lesions were there and the patient was also immunocompetent. Patient was not immunocompromised and in, in multiple uh, posterior pole lesions, it is a atypical presentation for toxo. Can we see the toxo together? So it can be. Uh, and uh, we in the left eye, we could see in the periphery there was a large granuloma type of lesion, two, two to three disc diameter, and a speck of heme was also present. It was going in favor of uh, tuberculosis. OCT would have been a very good thing to find out where is the site of lesion, retina or So, but the media was very hazy. In the right eye, we did B scan because it was hardly visible. And in the left eye, FFA was done, but OCT, it was not visible. Uh, toxo produces vitreous haze, but vitreous haze with toxo is uh, often localized. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Consumption of raw milk was there, but it can it was non-specific because uh, other than that, there was no such history of tuberculosis or contact history was present. And in USGB scan, uh, there was a suspect because there was increased thickness. Uh, 
and enlargement of lymph, lymph nodes were there. Yes. Sir, we were suspecting uh, extra pulmonary tuberculosis and uh, because uh, the lesions, we were suspecting tuberculosis and there was uh, interstinal cox also we were suspecting, so we started ATT after that we started steroid. Because you have started earlier, uh, when Someone the, else started, sir. Azithromycin, cotrimoxazole, and acyclovir and steroid were started before the patient presented to us. And still the patient was not responding to that treatment. So ultimately, what do you think the patient responded to? Was it the steroids or? A combination of both ATT and after that we started steroid. And you had the picture after the treatment? Yes, yes, sir. yes ma'am, yeah. This is the picture after four weeks of treating, eight, uh, starting ATT, and then after starting ATT, after two days, we started oral steroids. But the lesion in the left eye looks like there's a old, deep scar, and then there's another, another lesion next to it. So this is after four weeks. Before four weeks, uh, this was a large granuloma type of lesion. This one was coming like ring of fire appearance, uh, this lesion. This lesion, lesion has reduced after four weeks. There was improving, uh, the vitritis has improved and the lesions are res resolving. So, uh, so although it, it responded to the treatment, um, my way of, uh, my sixth sense is telling me that it's a toxo only. So, so I don't know how to defend myself. But I think uh, it responded to steroid, not to ATP. That is an antitoxic regime only, initially. Vision deteriorated. The raw milk is a long time, is uh, was thought to be earlier, Woods time, um, Alan C. Woods time, they, were, they were used to think that the brucellosis is one of the cause of, uh, cause of the uveitis. But brucellosis later on has not been found to be an important cause of uh, uveitis or choroiditis. I just reviewed an article on brucellosis. Uh, this is going to get published soon. And they said that various manifestations, even choroiditis, can be due to brucellosis. Sir, one question. Uh, whether in the immunocompetent patient, can toxoplasma present with so many Multiple lesions. Yeah. Bilateral, yeah. it can be. Even immunocompetent can have uh, bilateral. I have a case of peripheral toxoplasma. I was thinking of toxocara only. And Later on, when the patient pops out with a posterior pole lesion, I thought that my diagnosis of uh, toxoplasma was correct. And it turned out to be toxoplasma positive. Initially, it was a negative for ELISA for toxoplasma. So we'll go to the next case. Thank you, sir.